allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So, thank you for coming to the August, uh, April 15th Selectman's meeting on business, um, <coughs> trash, and recycling. Um, this is uh, uh, any comments made here tonight are only about business, though not about condos. So, if you're here for condos, you need to come back next week. But we will not be talking about condo, trash, or recycling. And <coughs> We're going to hear the presentation from the DPW, Chris and Jen. And um, we ask that when people speak, uh, I understand there's going to be selected speakers for certain groups. And um, the um, if anyone wants to say whatever, there's a, uh, basically a three-minute um, minimum, or not minimum, but <laughs> maximum. <laughs> and, um, yeah, and, uh, <laughs> after we get to hear the general um, remarks that people have to say, it really doesn't help if you just keep repeating the same ones over and over again, because we're going to try to get to the bottom of the issue here, and we're going to start out with our presentation from the DPW. All right, thank you. Uh, good evening, Chris Jacobs and Jennifer Hale. Um, Jennifer and I have been working for the last uh, week, week and a half to put together a slide presentation um, with the intent of um, that it will establish a baseline of what, a, what is a current situation, what are our possibilities going in the future, any number of things. Um, so uh, as you can see from the second slide, uh, I people need to keep in mind that currently we're under a contract with waste management. Um, uh, copies of those have been made and uh, uh, handed out. And we're under contract through uh, June 30th of 2020. About, um, oh, I would say January of uh, 2020, we would probably start the process to rebid the work. But right now we're under contract with waste management. And Looking over my notes today, I even came up with uh, when they gave us the price that they gave us, uh, they were looking at receiving all 8,000 pounds of what we generate, the 6,000 of trash and the 2,000 of recycling. So their original contract was based on, on um, that particular tonnage or a reasonable expectation of that tonnage. Next slide. You want to talk, explain the map? Uh, basically, the reason the map is in here is that at some of our past meetings, uh, people were asking, um, what is it that we collect and why is it different in the summer than it is um, in the non-summertime <coughs> and what are the areas? Well, it's fairly hard to see up here, but the town's broken off into quadrants. Uh, residential trash pickup is picked up uh, Monday through Thursday on non-summer hours based on the area that you live in. Uh, but the overall um, hotel and motels are collected Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And then retail stores and restaurants, uh, they're collected, uh, including the beach area, Monday through Friday daily. So based on the different groups, and this just sort of summarizes it right there, um, we do residential collection. Not, these are, again, non-summer, Monday through Thursday. The hotels and motels get collection Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And then retail stores and restaurants basically get it Monday through Friday daily, including the beach. What happens uh, for those 13 weeks we call summer. Uh, in summer collection, it's actually defined. It begins on the third Monday of June, and it ends at the end of day on the Monday after the seafood festival. So we're talking that period in between June and September where we have different practices. And basically what that does is that it adds two sections. Uh, we still do residential collection Monday through Thursday, you know, once a week type of situation. But we now have what we call beach residential. Beach residential is basically from Ocean Boulevard at Winnicunit South uh, to the bridge. Uh, so those residents get residential pickup Monday and Friday. 
And now the hotels and motels, they have a day added. They get Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. Uh, retails and restaurants basically get Monday through Friday. And then uh, the beach area only gets the additional Saturday and Sunday. Uh, so as you know, for those seven, uh, 13 weeks during the summer, we're out there seven days a week uh, picking up uh, trash and recycling. Question got asked uh, this past week. Can you give us a brief timeline on, you know, how or why we, how we got to the current place we're at where the town collects uh, both curbside trash and recycling? Um, people have to remember back pre-1994, uh, the landfill was open on um, what is now Hard Arts Way, but actually you got to it from Landing Road at that time because Otherwise, it was a dirt road. Um, everybody brought pretty much everything there, um, including yard waste, including whatever. Um, I know because about 1989 is the first time I started working in the town um, for a consultant and <coughs> actually went up and annually we used to take the topography at the top of the landfill and help the town determine the volume that had been placed in the landfill and what the life expectancy was and those sort of things. But even back then, 1989-90, um, I did the preliminary layout for the transfer station. I remember meeting with um, George Hardart was board yeah. selectman. You were there. Yeah. Um, there was so my history with this particular area goes back that far. Uh, on or about 1994, you started with building the transfer station and getting that in. Instantly, this, the landfill was not shut down. It was phased out the following year. Uh, the reason being there were still things like compost and other <coughs> types of items that were accepted in the landfill. But the <coughs> landfill was closed in uh, 1995. And we, the town, didn't take on both um, refuse collection and uh, recycling collection until June that was uh, July 1 of 2011. Mm -hmm. I came here in June. The trucks arrived later in that, uh, uh, that summer. I remember because they all arrived the same day. Um, and essentially July 1, the contract with waste management ended, and we started picking up both. Uh, one, we had the carts delivered in June, and then we started, the town started in with the actual collection of all, all the trash. Prior to that, uh, the town did the recycling. Remember, we had bins, basically, uh, totes, if you will, that you two-handed ones. And, the, and we picked that up, but the waste management picked up the trash. The uh, reason why we switched to carts in 11, major reason was to cut down on windblown trash, seagulls ripping trash apart, things yeah. of that nature. So uh, that's how we got to where we're currently at today. Um, may I? Just so know. we're going to have them do their presentation but first. While we're on that slide, I just want to make one small <laughs> observation. It was the dump. Before it was, it was called the dump. Okay. And people Let's used let to them make their presentation. And people used to go in and pick the dump. We're going to continue with the presentation. Okay. But it, we're going to continue with the presentation. Um, tonnages. Uh, we put this up again, a, a historical note. Um, you know, how much do we send out of town yeah. uh, to the landfill? Um, you can see there's the numbers between 14 and 18. The fluctuation that you see in the numbers, um, it really has to do with the summer economy. Mm -hmm. uh, it has to do with how good yep. the beach is doing. Yep. It has to do with how many rainy days there are down the beach. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure the members of the Beach uh, Business Association can tell you yeah. um, they live and die by the weather. Well, we see it on the, uh, the refuse side. The other thing you should note is um, we're currently at $64.64 a ton uh, for trash right now. It goes to 66 26 mm -hmm. starting July 1 and for the last remaining year of our contract. Uh, transportation currently stands at $219.00. Uh, trailer full load up to waste management, it g jumps to 221 next year. Um, and that's uh, the total projected cost at the bottom is 493, and that's um, not a small number. <coughs> recycling. Um, our recycling, w while we negotiated it through waste management, it goes down to their sister corporation, Wheel Liberator. 
uh, down in uh, Bill Rickham, Mass. There's a, what we call a single stream uh, sorting facility yeah. there. Uh, just imagine uh, conveyor belts all over the place, uh, people picking, sorting. Um, that's how they, they break it down. We are currently paying, and this is probably one of the things that brought this discussion to a head at this time. Uh, starting this year, starting in the fall last year, September, uh, we started paying a disposal fee, $185 a ton based upon 20% of all of our loads. Uh, the 20% is derived at, there's audits performed by waste management. Uh, they've determined that uh, approximately 20% of whatever we put in the recycling is contaminated for a number of things. Um, w biggest one, uh, recyclables kept in plastic bags, uh, the hefty bags, the garbage bags. That gums up their operation. Uh, they don't open the bags anymore. They just consider it waste or uh, refuse, and we get hit the contamination fee. Uh, and it currently cost us $347 per trailer load to go down to uh, uh, the Bill Ricca site. Um, if you, the bottom line, if you look at the, the what we were paying for transportation previously, what we had budgeted, $54,200, this uh, $185,000, $185 a ton, adds $100,000 uh, to our costs. Mm -hmm. uh, it was not uh, picked up in our budget. In other words, we kept a certain amount of contamination in there based upon what we knew for last year, but we did not have a 20% contamination rate. So that particular cost combined with the default budget is causing, causing the department some headaches. Yep. Next. Uh, did you want to go? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is just really um, sort of the little history that we've given to so why we're here. You know, the, the impact that these uh, changes in the recycling market, which is what's causing the contamination fee to be assessed, uh, is having on us. So as Chris just mentioned, we have the $100,000 of additional cost in 2019 alone. Um, but we also hear a lot of people saying, well, you know, do we even need to recycle them? You know, let's throw it in the trash. If, you know, trash is $67 and a contamination fee is $185, what you got to remember is that we only pay the $185 on the percentage of the total load. So in that example from the screen before, if we were to simply just throw it all away, it would be two hundred and six, or almost $207,000, uh, which is greater than the $154 uh, it costs to recycle. So unfortunately, the answer is not as simple enough well, then just throw the trash away. <coughs> that will cost more. Excuse me, throw the recycling away. Um, so it's basically uh, forced us to look at our collection operations, uh, the transfer station operations, and realizing that we need to be flexible uh, in order to work with how it's going to be changing, how it's changed already to date, and how it's going to change in the future. So with that, we sort of set out an outline, and this is something we had talked about um, a few weeks ago as well, about what can we do? What, what are we going to need to do? We've been before this board. Uh, we've been in the community sort of talking, well, we need to do um, education, because the education about what we should and shouldn't be throwing away is how we're going to reduce the camp contamination. If we reduce the contamination, then that fee goes down, and again, these are ways that we can save money. Um, the department has already reviewed our default budget. Uh, we've gone through and made changes and adjustments, uh, basically needing to redistribute um, that financial impact from the increase in contamination. Um, we've all talked about operational changes. Uh, we went through our first Sunday uh, looking at how can we do some savings uh, by reducing overtime hours at the transfer station. Uh, we've also looked at how we can adjust our yard. How do we adjust the transfer station to uh, work with the way recycling is being marketed and handled uh, to date? And then uh, another thing that we've been working on is reviewing the ordinance, uh, looking at how we redistribute um, basically our collection services. How do we go through and do um, a little bit more equal distribution between all the different pickups in what we're doing? Um, and the next few slides really just walk through each of those. Um, you want to start with the education part? Yeah. Um, as I said, the primary 
um, source of contamination f reported from waste management is the fact that we're um, people take you know you've got an inside the kitchen recycling container I, I know we do uh, the tendency is to bundle that all up because it might be slightly dirty take that out and drop that in the recycling bin uh, while we appreciate wanting to keep the inside recycling container as clean as possible need to take that uh, bag outside, turn it upside down, shake all the recyclables into the green recycling cart, the, the toter that the town provides. Um, this will dramatically improve uh, how we're perceived by operationally handled by waste management. It will have a dramatic effect to reduce the amount of contamination, uh, probably by at least 10% not 10% from the total, but drop us from 20 to 10, because we have hit in the past 8, 10, and 12% on our contamination levels. Um, so we can actually uh, do that. Uh, the new <coughs> mantra that comes down from the recycling people and, and is uh, recycle right, <laughs> recycle often, and when in doubt, throw it out, um, tending to mean that for instance, this spring, if people come up with garden hoses, uh, oh, it's rubber, we could recycle it. No, it's not recyclable. That rubber garden hose is going to mess up the whole operation down in Bill Ricca. <coughs> Put that in the trash. Um, we had uh, one individual, uh, I'm sure they, they went did their research, they looked and said, oh, look, they, you can recycle microwave ovens, and it costs $10. They put the whole microwave oven with the $10 tapped taped to the top of it in the recycling container and my guys watched it go down the chute and into the container because nobody wanted to dumpster dive for the ten bucks. Um, so that would have needed to be brought to the, st you know, it, it's kind of funny but at the same time it's, those are the kind of things that we're going to be judged on. Um, uh, Christmas lights is another biggie. They said, you know, right after Christmas, a number of people, oh, these lights will never work again, or they were blinking, to throw them in the recycling container because, well, somebody will pick them apart for the copper wire. No, nobody slows down to pull those out. They gum up the works. So those are the kind of things, and, and we've got these uh, flyers that have uh, been made available to us that uh, we'll end up uh, <coughs> distributing. Um, Jennifer is working on um, with waste management. We're going to get stickers made up. All the recycling bins are going to actually have. They'll have the stickers on it that say what to do, so you can look right at it. What what can be recycled and what can't, and we're going to use Channel 22 um, to follow up with uh, more educational information. That being said, it did bring us back to. Um, our department's budgets, I know that we were asked, what are the number of things that we can do to offset that $100,000 cost? Um, we looked at it and I know we came back through the, with the board. We reduced our federal stormwater permit initiative for this year. Uh, I think we took almost 20000 out of that. Uh, we took out tree removal. I normally had a budget of 25000 for trees. We're down to five. Days like this, I pray that no trees come down because we just can't handle them. Uh, sidewalk maintenance, when normally that was a $26,000 item. That's been zeroed. Uh, signs, we went from 8,000 to 4,000. So only the most strategic signs, like stop signs, yield signs, and street names will be replaced. All the other advisory ones are probably not going to be, re if they're missing or, or, um, or are needed, there, there probably will not be sufficient funds to do that. Uh, we haven't ordered any additional carts. Um, we postponed, we had 170000 in the original budget for uh, sewer projects, the next project on the list. That's been reduced to ninety. We're probably going to cancel or severely reduce any future sewer projects. And as we said, we've already looked to reduce the number of summer hires. I had in there for an intern for the engineering department, not, not anymore. Uh, some of the... Uh, cut back on one of the beach crew by one, and um, we're really looking at um, the rest of the summer's uh, hirees. And also, I've told the rest of the staff there is no money for training this year, other than to maintain, let's say, a solid waste license or a wastewater treatment plant license. 
So the other thing that we're proposing to do is on top of that reduction in Sunday hours, we're going to set up a separate uh, area for the residents to drop off of. And what that'll do is um, it'll allow the residents, if you will, to get through the station quicker. Um, it'll also give us the opportunity to work with them as to what's recyclable and what's not. Can we just jump to the next slide? So I'll, what you're seeing here is an aerial view. The tr current transfer station is the bottom left of the, the, uh, the screen. What is currently the, I don't know, turnaround area in front of the metals bin uh, is going to be in basically a, a residential drop-off area. We're going to, the red containers are the current metal uh, that we um, separate out. The blue and the green matching our carts and our refuse carts, that's where the, uh, the peak residential summertime traffic will be sent through. Mm. And the hope is that uh, the person that will be down there monitoring that can work with the residents one-on-one -on -one to say, mm. hey, that's, no, that needs to go into trash or, yeah, continue, that is recyclable, things of that nature. Mm. Um, the other thing we're going to end up doing is probably uh, in working with uh, the Net New Hampshire's NRRA, which stands for Northeast Refuse and Recycling Association, yeah. um, probably start diverting things like cardboard, paper, and glass as the market allows us or dictates. Mm -hmm. In other words, if let's say we can keep cardboard really clean, um, <coughs> Mike Dufour was here that night, made his presentation. You heard him say, if you can keep the cardboard clean, meaning dry and not food contaminated, there's a market for it. Uh, certainly a, uh, a market where we wouldn't have to pay 185 a ton to get rid of yeah. it. Maybe we'd only have to pay 35 a ton to get rid of it. Uh, the same thing with glass, the same thing with um, things like commodities like aluminum. Um, those things would and will continue to have a residual market uh, for them. Mm. Next slide. Now, we've been working on the police range last week, so I think uh, we'll probably get started on that new drop-off area within the, another week or two. We're waiting for things to dry out just a little bit. Go ahead. Uh, so basically what we've been talking about are just some of the operational changes that we need to make um, from a collection standpoint as well as um, at the transfer station. And the whole purpose for the operational changes is so that we can have the same flexibility uh, to be able to react to what we're being presented with um, from the market changes. So as Chris just said, th there is still a market for recyclables. They just have to be cleaner. Mm -hmm. So this is reducing contamination. This is something that we can all do town-wide, all efforts, um, all hands on deck. Um, the flexibility also allows us uh, to separate what we currently have as a single stream that for those until we get to that next step, for those coming into the transfer station, having the ability to do several streams. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if glass, you know, if, so here's some uh, examples. You know, styrofoam, although it is trash, it is not recyclable under our recycling program in silver uh, single stream. If there were a market out there, and there is, that collects styrofoam and uses it, we'd be able to um, separate that out at the transfer station when people come in and drop off materials. Mm -hmm. uh, same for colored and clear glass bottles. If we get to that point, um, yes, they can be crushed, and yes, they can be used in road reconstruction, uh, but they also can be sold at a cheaper cost uh, than doing the sil single stream, including them in and paying the contamination cost. Can I elaborate on mm -hmm. that? Yeah. Um, again, the NRRA has a program where there's about five or six of their member towns that do use a lot of glass in their road reconstruction. Um, they're mainly um, more rural towns than us. They have a lot of gravel or, or dirt roads. Um, what the NRRA is doing is they've hired an outside vendor. Um, people bring their glass bottles to these locations. Um, they stockpile them. Uh, the vendor comes in, crushes it, turns it all to basically cull it size pieces, mm -hmm. tip of my baby finger. And um, then if we as a member community wanted some of that back to let's say dress up a road that we were under or put, mix it with our gravels, we can take some of it back. Otherwise, 
some of the, most of those member communities have another use for it. Uh, the other thing that they offer is uh, there's a place in Montreal, Canada that wants um, beer bottles, glass bottles, soda bottles, whatever, uh, but they don't want them pulverized. They want them, they understand that a portion of them are going to break, but they just don't want them as crushed glass. Mm -hmm. There's a parent, however they use it, they need it in a more whole yeah. format or shape. So there are other options out there um, that we would go for. Go ahead. And, and that goes to the cardboard. I mean, cardboard, when it is kept dry and kept clean, is completely recyclable. It can go in our bins today. It can be broken down, put the lid down, it can be recycled. And yes, we're paying a contamination fee on it, but if we remove that contamination fee, those recyclables are getting removed at a much lower cost than trash. Um, and electronics, we do recycle the electronics that come into the transfer station. They don't all just go in the trash. We've had programs. Um, one of them has ended about a year and a half ago, but where Sony was actually coming back <coughs> in and taking all Sony products uh, and things like that. And again, that's all as the market uh, goes along um, and changes. So having that flexibility for us to be able to do those things uh, will set us up when there's uh, better options out there. Um, the last piece of this is sort of the piece that talks about what else can we do. Um, and these are the ordinance changes. Right now, under the current Selectman's um, Solid Waste Ordinance, uh, we talk about where the trash containers should go, the space between them. Uh, and for as long as I've been here, and I'm assuming as long as you've been there, the process has been, you know, you call, you come, you ask for a cart, and you're given a cart. And that has just grown. Um, somebody asked me today, uh, how many carts do you think we have floating out there? Um, we have 16,200 carts out on the streets. Um, give or take, my spreadsheet might be awesome. But uh, with that number of carts out there, that is a lot of collection happening on behalf of the town. Um, trying to look through that equality of service trying to figure out what is the happy medium. It's not saying none, it's not, and, and I'm not even saying that, it's just looking at it and going, what makes sense um, for us to say yes and no to when it comes to issuing carts uh, and allowing people to have them. We've worked through uh, some of the condo stuff in the past with the five units or more. Um, this ordinance uh, can look to address the max number per property, uh, doing it whether it's residential or business. Um, the other items in the ordinance that weren't there before, the requirement and having the authority to request that the materials stay clean, that we are folding the cardboard and that it is staying covered, uh, that we are purposely not crushing or shattering glass um, into the bottles. We get that it breaks. It breaks when we lift it and you know dump it back into the truck. That's normal, but uh, we want to make sure that we aren't ruining the product um, which can also get into our machines and ruin them. So these were some ordinance changes that uh, could be potentially made uh, to look at how we address the overall stuff. Correct. So this last slide are really truly just our department's recommendations of how we move forward, how we continue to need to look at ways to um, be flexible, uh, reduce our operations so we can have a cost savings in order to um, be able to accommodate the increase that we are now paying on recycling. And this is truly just everything we've talked about. Continue with the re-education program to get that contamination uh, percentage down. Um, focus on the market today. You know, keep the glass in the recycling stream until it's no longer marketable within the single stream. <coughs> right now, if we were to take that all out and put it in the trash, I did that math out, you pay more to throw away recycling as trash than you do as yeah. recycling material. Um, but also, as Chris said, with the NRA and others, um, continue to explore buyers that are out there. What are our options? What can we do? And then be able to um, react to that. I need to make a point on that. Remember back in the 70s and 80s when, if you will, that little green triangle came into vogue and, you know, it was just to get people to recycle, period, and we used to I can remember three bins. There was the cardboard bin, there was the newspaper bin, and then there was the um, glass and bottles, cans bin. 
Um, so we were never, at, when we started, we weren't a single stream. Right. And the reason why it was set up that way is because we did have to divert the material to different markets. The markets were developing, They're, they were emerging. Then came, you know, like Mike Dufour was here to explain, when cardboard we were getting $300 a ton, we said, oh, just put it all in the same thing. We'll build this big facility and we'll sort it. Well, it's kind of like now we're going back a little bit. And what we're going to end up doing is what I call several stream sorting. In other words, maybe the glass and the plastics and the bottles will all stay as one stream, but certainly things like cardboard, paper, styrofoam, other things are, as the market dictates, are going to have to be d diverted into multiple streams. Uh, I don't think we're going to go back to a pure single stream recycling in the future that I can see. So, continue. Uh, the next thing that was down there was renegotiate the contract. As I said, uh, we're currently under a contract with waste management. Um, I know from comments they've made and comments uh, that we've realized, um, we're definitely going to be in a re, uh, rebidding situation uh, in early 2020. Uh, we want to work with the business owners that, and that, you know that produce the uh, glass volumes. Um, we just there's some minor things that have to change, uh, basically how we handle it or how we segregate that that glass. Um, and then lastly, was whatever ordinance changes uh, the board mm -hmm. can agrees to and, and thinks are uh, worthy to implement. Yeah. Um, Mr. Welch, now, Sir. if there are ordinance changes, do they have to be voted on by the public? I think voted on by the board. Just the board. Is it? There is a town ordinance that was voted on by town meeting, which gave the board authority under that ordinance to make regulations for the management of the, of the transfer station and recycling. And that's where your authority comes to set regulations that allows them to manage the streams. Mm -hmm. So basically, we're here tonight because this has been talked about it and uh, over and over that we were going to start. The same thing is true for when we do the re uh, next week with the uh, commercial trash. And um, so we are prepared to make a decision here after we listen to everybody uh, of just how many um, recycling carts are going to be allowed. Uh, and I would like to hear what your recommendations are for that. What we did through the ordinance was take the original one uh, and we looked at using the board's current policy uh, that says for condominiums uh, of five and more uh, that we wouldn't pick them up. Uh, so we went and said, well, if other people are allowed, and this goes back to some of that equality we were talking about, if other people were allowed to have up to five recycling and five trash containers, that our ordinance would say, well, that would go across the board. You'd be allowed up to 10 containers if you can show you have a place to put them, you can get them up to the street, um, mm -hmm. have, you know, yeah. in the right area and those type of things. There has to be a place to put them, right. but so, they're not out on the street, correct? Right. Correct. So <clears throat> that was one way we looked at addressing that section in the ordinance. Um, and, th and that strictly came from something that had currently already been established. We're already allowing <coughs> up to 10 on certain other properties, uh, so why not um, 10 for businesses? Now, that being said, there's a lot of discussion that can have with that. Um, 10 cards. <coughs> if someone wanted to do their own glass collection to bring it to single stream because we have a way to deal with glass, they could then have 10 trash cards. It doesn't have to be five and five. These are just suggestions. There's mm -hmm. ways to, to look at it, but we wanted to you know keep the So you're max. talking about a total of 10 cards and it's up to the uh, Discretion of the people if they wanted them based for on operations because everybody's operations could be different. Okay, why don't we bring it back to the board? Uh, Jim, did you want to start out? No, I, I wanted to hear from. I mean, people came here to give presentations. Yeah. I want to hear. But from I mean, I thought maybe we should comment on what they've had to say so far. I'm going to wait and comment at the end. Did you have anything to say, Rusty? No, I'd like to hear what the, the public has to say. Does anyone want to say anything right now? Mrs. Wolseley. No, that's all right. 
Okay, we're going to open it up to the public. <laughs> Join us, please, at the podium and state your name and address. Thank you. My name is Fred Rice, 15 Heather Lane. Uh, this is a subject near and dear to my heart. I spent 40 years in the waste management business, and uh, over that time I've worked with public works directors, private haulers, materials recovery facilities, landfill owners and operators, haulers, all over the United States. Uh, I taught solid waste management at the college level in California. And uh, New England, one of the things I have to say right up front, New England is the only area in the entire country that I have ever observed where trash collection costs were included in the tax base. You go to Atlanta or Chicago or Los Angeles and tell them that your trash collection is covered in your taxes, they'll tell you you're crazy for doing it. They really will, because nobody does it that way. Just here, and I think it's more because it's a tradition than anything else. Um, I, I will have to say too, and there's no reflection on anybody uh, here now, but for many years, the, the way landfills were run in the United States, New England had the smallest, most poorly run landfills of any type. They didn't line them, they didn't cover them properly, they didn't uh, yep. put the, compact the refuse properly. The Hampton landfill was one of the worst I have ever, had ever seen uh, in the mid 80s. I came back and my dad asked me to go take a look at it. It was in terrible shape. Yep. But anyway, uh, let's, let's talk about commercial waste. Right now, as you heard, we've got a tremendous uh, burden on our public works department. Yep. We've got a tremendous burden on our town budget. We've got a tremendous burden on our taxpayers. What we need to do is do something that is bold and that is going to solve a problem that will take a lot of that unhappiness away from everybody concerned. I think we've got three options. One, we could either keep all trash collection under the property, in the property tax, property tax and hope for a solution. Hope that all of these tweaks and, and changes that Chris and Jen are making uh, can somehow solve the problem. It puts an awful lot of of obligation on them, yeah. puts a lot of extra work on yeah. them with limited, very limited resources. Uh, it won't resolve any of the inequities. Five recycling and five trash, tra wait a minute, somebody has a, yeah. what size house is that? I have one of each. And why does somebody get five? Do they pay five times the property tax that I do? That's a big inequality. Another inequality exists in the frequency of collection. There's no formula to make any of it equal. It just will not happen. Um, the other thing that it does by keeping it in the tax base is it kicks the can down the road and doesn't really solve the problem. Yeah. The second option we have is to keep the, only the residential in the property tax and make all commercial tax private contract. Now that has some problems of its own. It's unfair to very small businesses. Somebody, a small business that doesn't put out much more trash than a residence, they have to go out and contract for that. Uh, very, very difficult if they're one of the few that, that uh, has to do that. Uh, it requires a reca it would requ require a recalculation of all the property taxes in town <coughs> twice. Once when you remove the commercial cost, cost of commercial collection out of the tax base, and another one to reallocate all the remaining residential costs. So you've got a reallocation, the assessor's office will be working double time on this, or somebody will, to reallocate those, cloth, those costs. Uh, and one bad thing about that, there's no objective basis for making any of those comparisons. A business at the beach in the summertime is not at all the same as a vacation rental in the summertime, or a house up on Mill Road. Uh, there's no way to make those equal. The third option we have is to remove all trash collection from the tax base. Just take it out completely. It would require, it would reduce all the property taxes and it would redu reduce the town budget. Two ways to do it. The town could run the program or it could be commercially contracted. If the town runs the program, they would be doing the same thing they're doing now, uh, if that was what the choice was. But if they did, it would have to be totally standalone and self-sustaining. You can't take it out of the tax base and then rob money out of the tax base to fill in the gaps. It would have to be totally standalone. It would require a separate administrative function 
to keep track of all this, a bookkeeping function and so forth, and that might re result in higher costs. It, it would require new equipment, bigger um, uh, dumpster uh, trailers and so forth, packers, uh, and that would result in the higher costs. If the town contracted out the trash collection, they do it a couple of ways. One would be on a straight contract, the way we do now for disposal, but for, for collection, what most towns that I've seen all across the country do is they establish a solid waste franchise zone. And they say, this is a solid waste franchise. It's up for bids. Who wants to bid on this thing? And the, you can do it a couple of ways. You can have a flat fee for, for uh, the right to have the, the franchise. And then you compete on the cost that it would be to the, to the consumers that they service. The other one would be to compete on the franchise fee and compete on the cost to consumers. The end result here, you want to be able to have the lowest cost to your users, no matter what it is. Do you want to bring your comments to an end? You've been speaking yes, for five just minutes. About there. Um, it would include all residential and commercial t uh, uh, trash and recycling. Uh, there would be no administration, no equipment, only the franchise rule enforcement. You make the contractor do it by enforcing the rules of the franchise. Uh, property taxes would be reduced for all property owners. They would get a separate bill the way 90% of the rest of the United States does for their, for their uh, refuse collection. Thank you for your comments. And uh, it would include uh, provisions in there in such a franchise to save all of the jobs for the current people who work in, in, in uh, our uh, waste collection efforts right Thank now. Thank you. Who would Reduce like to cost, speak next? Space and equipment. And I would strongly recommend that it be given strong consideration. Thank you. Chuck Rage, 121 Ocean Boulevard. Um, a bunch of the businesses and I got together. Um, so I'm representing probably 25 to 30 businesses right here okay. while he's out here. Some yeah. are not, not able to be here. Uh, instead of us all getting up and everybody rehashing the same thing. We're, we're upset. We're upset to hear about a change in the trash policy at the beach. This is just right before the season. Um, it's not the time to do it. We've spent hours discussing with all the select persons, town manager, um, the public works director. Um, we, we put it out there that we're, we're here to help. We want, we want to make it work. We understand it needs to work. Uh, we've been talking a lot of trash. Um, but we don't need a knee-jerk reaction. We're going to end it now. We're going to change this now. We're going to do this now. The whole world is changing in the way they do trash and the way they recycle. And, and tomorrow it might be different than it was yesterday. Next year might be different than it is today. So we really have to work at this. We don't want private contractors coming down at all hours at the beach. We don't want what will end up happening is there will be a lot of dumping. There's cottages that people are there that are uh, transient. They're going to dump their trash because they don't have space for it. Um, what does that bring? That brings rats. That brings things we don't want. We have to keep our beach clean. We, we go through this every three, four years. It comes back. Um, I, we, we think, we feel that we should all uh, put a committee together, a couple businesses from the town, from the beach, selectman's office, um, the town manager, uh, public works, put a committee together, come up with some solutions. I know in Salem they have, where my mother, my mother lives in Salem and I bring her trash for her once in a while, they have a transfer station there. They do not do trash pickup. Mm. Their transfer station is five times the size of our transfer station yep. and the lines go on and on and on. Are we going to spend three, four million dollars on building a new transfer station? What did we save? We didn't save anything. When you start limiting barrels, limiting that barrels to different businesses, it doesn't work. Limiting barrels of different pieces of land. I have eight parcels. I have eight properties. Mm -hmm. So does that give me 80 barrels? I don't need 80 barrels. <laughs> Take someone like um, David Hartnett has a huge property, but that's one lot. I have eight lots. I don't need 80 barrels. But he has a huge property. It's not fair to his property if he if he can only put 10 barrels on. Mm -hmm. um, there's and, and and again, we have a lot of trash in, in the summer. I put out barrels three days a week in the summer. In the winter, I put maybe one barrel out every two months. 
That's it. So I think you have to, we have to really work together. We need to, um, we, we, need, we need to come up with some solutions. Um, Chris and Jen, they worked hard. They came up with $185,000 out of their budget. I think we were all shocked with that. So we're able to pay for this this year. Let's get a committee together and let's say by the 20th of October, we have, the committee comes here and says, this is what we, we, we can do, and then the selectmen make a decision then. Please don't do this before the summer. We don't need the beach to be a disaster. We had enough trouble last year when we had uh, the Legionnaire's disease, and the misconception of what that was kept hundreds of thousands of people, maybe, from the beach. We saw that with Seafood Festival. It kept people from coming because I don't want to get Legionnaire's disease if I'm walking down the boulevard. Well, we all know that's not how you get Legionnaire's disease. But if there's, if, if, there's on, if there's something on Facebook, a bunch of rats running across the boulevard, I'm telling you right now, the first thing on the news is Hampton Beach is full of rats. They had maggots that they, they got from a beach that had nothing to do with Hampton Beach. It was all over Facebook. We, 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 we can't rush into this. We need to get together, all of us. It's a town thing. It's a beach thing. Hampton is one town. Let's, let's work together. Thank you. Join us at the podium. Hi, uh, everybody. My name is Ray Blondo, Jr. Um, I'm at 26 Ashworth Avenue. I'm a concerned resident here in New Hampshire, and locally we had managed a parking lot. Um, thank you for inviting me tonight and let me speak. Um, first of all, I just want to start out by saying the Public Works Department here is unbelievable. They have the un most unreal con uh, effort every morning. They come from one end of the beach to the other do an unbelievable job, and the reason they're able to do an unbelievable job, in my opinion, is they're in full control of the entire operation. They pretty much tell the guy when to do the street sweeping. They tell the kids when to sweep everything in a pile. They work with the state park in, in complete unison to make sure they get the front of the beach. It is incredible. I go for my coffee at 9 o'clock. It's like a new page every day. And that is what I think is so important to this beach. It is mission critical. Just like Disney World, they put all this stuff underneath. People don't want to see it. And unfortunately, we live in a Disney World on that beach. It literally is a destination point. So both of the, that point that the gentleman made is very important. You have to understand the beach has got to be removed quickly and in a, in a, in a good fashion by having bottles stockpile at a place for them to be brought to the transfer station. It's like Junior bring out the trash. They're not going to do it. They're going to wait two weeks bottle sitting in the sun with the yeast is going to bring your bees, your, your, all of the stuff that you don't want. Mm -hmm. So keep all of this in mind. You have a very limited resource there and it's worth a lot of money. People downplay <laughs> the amount of money it's worth to have a clean beach for people to go. And let's not forget the people going there are watching our example. They're watching everything we do. The kids are used mm -hmm. to recycling. They want to know this. This is a learning opportunity for all of them. Um, state line waste management. I don't know how they or anybody else would be able to coordinate the effort that this town does every day. And I'm telling you, I live on 26. I hear it every morning. Bah! I get woken up to this. I don't even need an alarm clock. And all my guests are like, oh my god, how do you do it? I go, that's, just, that's progress. Look at the job they do. That's my only concern. I don't want to pay taxes like everybody in this room. However, I know when you, when you start breaking up a, a concerted effort, there's always one guy in the, <coughs> the thing, right? I want to keep the one person. And from what I'm hearing from everybody here, Chris and, her, and, and his um, per presenter with him, I like what I'm hearing. I like the fact that they're on top of it. I just want to hear more of the fact we don't want to end up backing off the recycling thing. I like the flexibility. Um, ourselves, we have eight condos. Only five of them are occupied uh, pretty much at any one time. I think we have four bins. It's more than enough in the wintertime. And with the other gentleman, we use one. Mm -hmm. So. Maybe this gentleman says you do a system where you have to pay per barrel. You go online, you drop your little permit, boom, and it goes to a third party and you collect money that way and it's per unit. Then it's fair. Either way, I'd like to see, and I'm glad that the town's on top of this because I have a lot of confidence in the way they've done their jobs to date. Thank you very much. Are you here for condos? You mentioned I'm here for everything. I'm here for condos. Well, I'll condo, be back next week. Yeah, yeah I'll come back. So that's a separate I'll miss discussion. You guys by then, I'll be back and give you the same. It's a separate discussion. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, I'm here, and also because we have potential commercial at some point. For Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs>
Other people that would like to speak? Mr. Preston? <laughs> we, we brought these up back from 2014. Uh -huh. I have a whole uh, collection of different signs if anybody needs any. <laughs> We've gone through this story a couple of times before. As I say, that sign came from 2014. Article 43 at the time said on the petition of Mary Louise and 20 other, 25 other voters to see if the town will vote to direct the Board of Selectmen to discontinue all public collection of condominium commercial and retail waste no sooner than uh, sometime in September. Now, the town voted on this. this. This was not a very hard campaign. The tally, the people that were in favor of that was 463 people. 84% of the people said no. That was 2,517 votes. I think the people understand the problems we have at the beach. I think the people understand that it's important to have a clean beach. A clean beach means we have more tourists and more visitors. A clean beach means more pride equals perhaps better tax assessments. Bigger tax assessments bring in more tax dollars, which makes that cash register ring. I don't think we want to fool around and go backwards on how a beach looks. I don't think that we want dumpsters. Now, we had a meeting a couple of weeks ago, some concerned people. There was, there was 12, 14 people there. And we're talking about this and, and what we can do. And I, I said to them, how many people here voted for the schools? Every one of them. Their kids are grown up. Some of them, you know, they don't have families here. But we voted for the schools because it was the right thing to do for our community. I think this is the right thing to do for Hampton Beach. So I prefer not to see any changes. If it means things like the plastic bags, what I do, you have one bag that you have to shake. I stop that. You, to, you get a an old-fashioned bag, you pick it up, the stuff is gone. And now you don't have it, you're not handling dirty trash. It's just, it's easier. But the people, I think, have, have voted and spoke before. And I think if we asked them again, I think the vote would be the same. Thank you. Yeah. I'm just curious, is anyone here representing any uptown businesses? Because this is not just about the beach. And I think it's, uh, that's where there's a problem. Yeah. Uh, for people to understand this. <clears throat> it's not just about the beach. This isn't about the beach. So I'm surprised that there are no one here representing the people uptown mm -hmm. that have businesses. Uh, anyone like to speak? Mm -hmm. Mr. Zanoy? <clears throat> Gary Zanoy, 16th Presidential Circle. I might be raining on a parade here, but here are my comments. I am absolutely in favor of eliminating the pickup and disposal of commercial trash. I see it as a business expense that should be paid for in total by the businesses and hence removed from the backs of the taxpayers of Hampton. Article 43 in 2014 certainly had the percentage that was discussed, but it was an article that was all encompassing with condos, small condos, big condos. What do the people vote for or against on that article? <clears throat> Trash and recycling was mentioned in that article, and you know, people feel good about recycling today. But accordingly, no financial impact as to the budget savings were attached to that article. So as to how can one truly vote if they don't know the impact financially of the operational budget of the town and their percent per thousand that they would be redu reduced by? They don't. So how can they make a proper decision or a <clears throat> rational decision? They couldn't. The, the warrant article has, has to be written to, 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 to speak to the financial impact of such a decision. Now, the tactics that I've heard this morning or this, this evening are the same that I heard several years ago about rats and dogs and mice and, and, and uh, smells and odors 
and bags found on back roads full of trash and the likes. Nothing new here. It's a great argument uh, to maintain status quo. The Beach Commission, uh, together with business, a uh, good astute business com uh, community, community members, which I, I know they have, can certainly put a plan together that would negate these concerns. Mm -hmm. without, without doubt, would negate these concerns. And, and Chuck's comment about working with the town on that would be fine. But should be a clear decision as to what we do with that commercial trash. Time moves on, change occurs. I say we should meet the challenge and the opportunity for improvement. Just look what the state is doing to the Hampton taxpayer. Backed out of its 35% retirement contribution to town employees, yeah. we fill the bill. Disproportionate share of meals and rooms taxes. Mm -hmm. No mention of parking revenue, of course. We get zero. <laughs> The operational budgets expand, and they get rejected. And default budgets reign. And I, I believe they will continue to reign unless we make these moves to show that we are astute from a business point of view in town here, in managing this town, and we take on these opportunities. I like what Fred said, but it's not that easy about you know, taking it out of the tax base and coming up with ways on how to charge people. I thought of it myself, and I'd like to have a discussion with Fred about it. You know, about using GPSs on trucks and so on, so you know where you're stopping, and how that can be weighed, and blah, blah, blah. I have a lot of thoughts on that. About the current stage of recycling, I went on a DPW website, and I tried to find the recycling, and I found it. It says this page is under construction. I cannot give you any, uh, Advice, it's on construction, it's under construction. What kind of contamination? I don't know what kind of contamination they're experiencing. And the public doesn't know either. So I really think there's a lot of work to be done with recycling. And we shouldn't be recycling at the rate of 30%, which is what we were back in 2009 and 10, Rick. That should be close to 40% today. And could be with a good plan. And I have thoughts on that. Throw those kind of thoughts out there on recycling and the plan to improve, and I'll be here speaking to that as well. I think we ought to get on with it and turn a new era here with this commercial trash and eliminate picking it up, get it out of the, and get it away from the taxpayers' backs, off the taxpayers' backs, so we can begin to pass some budgets. Thank you. Other people would like to speak? Mr. Warburg. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Brian Warburton, 24 <coughs> Sanborn Road. I have a unique perspective, I think, as many of you in the audience and here know, having been a former selectman and managed state parks, the only one that's ever done that, having held both positions. I want to start off by using the word that Fred Rice said earlier, because Fred Welch and I did it in 2007, being bold. We started recycling on Hampton Beach. Some of you may remember that. And I work with Mr. Welch. We had ideas back then that would help the stream and help, what are we going to do with this thing called trash? It still exists today. I think inequities, as Mr. Zanoy has addressed, need to be addressed. I haven't heard from most comments tonight anything that talks about the entire taxpayer in Hampton. This has got to be addressed. And what's wrong with addressing it? I have friends of mine in the audience tonight who own condos. And they're coming next week, and they're gonna, just going to say to them, we can't pick their trash up, but we can pick businesses up seven days a week. That in itself, whether it's constitutional or not, I sat at where you sat, uh, Chairman Griffin, and as you well know, you guys got tough decisions to make. And I think we've got to start making big decisions. Our public works department is under, I mean, they, they need more help. I mean, we've got more major projects in this town in the next 10 years, yeah. more expenses. Mr. Zanoy said something very interesting as well tonight, and if you listen to what he really said is that when are we going to start giving the taxpayer, think about a break, but let the taxpayers, of which I'm one of them, see that we're making decisions that are going to help the load, so to speak. Um, listen, I'm all for businesses, but guess what? They're making money. They make a profit. My trash on Sanborn Road gets picked up once a week. And with the recent issues, the recycling, as we all know, sometimes it wasn't picked up for days later. That's not public works fault. Everybody lived with it.
But I think it's time for leadership to stand up, much like our great town manager did 12 years ago. There's nothing wrong with sitting here. Whatever decision you guys make is not going to make everybody happy. But I got to tell you, this commercial trash is nowhere to be found in any other community. None. And I'll leave you with this. I've heard a lot of discussion from state parks. And I, boy, do I love hearing it, because nobody has asked my opinion. Twelve years ago, I made a presentation, and everything I did with state parks was for the benefit of the town of Hampton. Yeah. And Mr. Welch is aware, I made a presentation to have the entire state trash get out of town. Yeah. Take waste management, remove it. And the other thing I will end with this, if somebody's missing a point tonight, if we go to private halls and people have to pay for their trash, or uh, meaning the uh, commercial, I don't want it to go to a transfer station. Take it out of town. Yeah. That's yeah. what we got to be thinking of. It's, it's going to be hard. I have, and just so you know, I have friends, businesses that agree with me. Some don't agree with me, but they understand that we are at a juncture in this town right now, and we cannot continue the way we're doing it because it, it just isn't working. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Good. Uda Pinio is joining us at the podium. Uda Pinio, 15, Title F. I thought we were talking also about the weight of the beer bottles. Yeah. You can talk about that. <laughs> 2010, 2012, we had a whole bunch of um, selectments, like Brian Warburton was one of them, when all the recycling changed. Yeah. Before you had to bring the beer bottles into the restaurant, stack them, beer company came on Monday, beer company came on Friday, picked the empties up, took them back. Recycling changed when they took everything. Yeah. And everything got dumped into these recycling bins. Yeah. And that's how we ended up with a lot more waste than what we, uh, you know, beer bottles for recycling and waste, yeah. because people throw it either way. What do we have, what we have now? They should go back. Let the beer companies deal with it. Thank you. <laughs> the, um, Tom of Burke, 95 Ocean Boulevard. Uh, a lot of people actually said some things that I was going to say, so I crossed them off my list. But I just want to follow up on Uda's point that you had about the beer bottles. Yeah. Well, guess what? It's too late. The, the beer companies don't pick them up any longer because we as a town said, we'll pick them up. Uh, Please, like, put them into the recycle because we're going to make some money off of it. Okay, so guess what? As the whole state of New Hampshire went the, um, recycling, the beer company said, we're not picking up your recycled bottle anymore. So we don't have the option to do that. So we kind of were tricked into this system and now we're being blamed for this system. Wow. You know, what I do like is what Jen had to say, that there are a lot of different type of options that we have to explore. We mm -hmm. can't explore them in a two-hour meeting. Mm -hmm. We can't explore them in two weeks of business owners getting together. We need to actually dig in mm -hmm. and figure out how we, as the businesses down at the beach, in town, everywhere, can reduce and we can recycle where we can actually make some money. Luckily, what Jen was saying was all the things that the businesses could do that probably private sectors can't do. We can separate our bottles. We can separate our cardboard. We can do it in a system that we always have been doing it. We used to tie the cardboard up and put it out, and guess what, we don't do that anymore because they say, you don't have to do it anymore. Yeah. Why do you keep telling us what we don't have to do and then complain to us that what we are doing is wrong? I mean, it's total BS. It, no, like, it, it, it's just awful. Just let us do our business down the beach. Our business is tourism. People don't come to a dirty tourist town. Like, if I went to Hampton Beach and there was trash everywhere, guess what? There was a possum in Brown Ave for about a week and a half that nobody picked up dead in the middle of the road. You, you guys must have seen it. Uh, the, I'm sure the police had seen it. It was dead there. Guess what? There are possums that live there. There are skunks that live there. Seagulls that live there. There's all these things that live there. And for all the good operators that we have down the beach, all we need is one bad operator. And next thing you know, we're having Facebook, like Chuck said, and I don't want to repeat that, but they're going to now be saying Hampton Beach is disgusting. Because guess what? We're just getting over the bad reputation that we had. 
It was a horrible, disgusting place that I lived in. Okay, and now it's getting decent. I remember when I moved back here from California in 2003, you know, I was here every summer of my life. This is my 48th summer, my family's 50th summer on Hampton Beach as owners. Previous to that, they came as vacationers. And so when I came back and during the middle of the winter, I looked around and I said, what did I get myself into? This is gross. It was full of heroin addicts. It was full of everything. And guess what? Little by little, we're changing it. Okay, and by changing the, the way that we're keeping our beach clean is not going to help in attracting people to move here. It's not going to attract people to be a tourist here. You know, what it's going to attract is the people we used to have here that we're trying to get rid of. Okay, <laughs> that's a couple things. You know, and some of the things that, you know, I took personal offense to what Mr. Zanoy had to say. You know, the business owners are the taxpayers of this town as well as the people who are residents. We contribute with rooms and meals tax and property taxes. You know, luckily I always have my computer on to vision appraisal because that's what I do for a living. So I did a little calculation and Mr. Zanoy pays roughly about $6,800 a year in taxes. Okay, my mother, who is the matriarch of the, of the McGuirk family, pays $109,702 in taxes at the town of Hampton. Okay, why is it that his burden is so much more important than our burden? That's 15 properties, and I'm certain that Chuck's 11 properties are pretty damn close. And not for nothing, the, the Sharkey family's bills must be five times as much as my bills. These are the people that are down there working. We don't make so much money that we're just don't know what to do with it. <laughs> you know, but what I can tell you is that that Legionnaire's disease thing that went on last year yeah. continues to this day. If you ask anybody in the rental business, which we're in the rental business, we're in the parking lot business, we're in the restaurant business, we're in the hotel business, you name a business. It's not like that we like to do businesses, but we have to. We have to have all the different streams of, of income coming in. Okay, but if you ask anybody, there is a certain couple of weeks that very difficult to rent right now. You know, and, and you, we're finding that the rentals are a lot slower than they were last year, my opinion. I could be wrong, but I talked to other people, same thing. This is a residual of last year. This is the bad publicity that we had. Let's get over the bad publicity. That was one bad operator, okay? That's all we need for trash is one bad operator. So why don't we work together? We, we work towards reducing and, and, and recycling smartly, and then also, keeping our businesses clean. Our beach business is the tourist business. I don't care mm -hmm. if you're there year round and you live in a condo or a house or whatever, you're living in a tourist community. Mm -hmm. So that's what we have to do. Remember that is what we are and we have to invite people in to a clean environment. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak from the audience? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. There's probably not too many people in the room. Maybe a couple here that... Name and address. Charlie Preston, 47 Glade Path. Uh, I'd like to talk about the commercial tracks, but from a residential point of view. Yeah. There's probably not many of us in this room who remember the name Joe LaFramboise. Mm -hmm. Once yep. upon a time, Joe LaFramboise was the trash man for the town of Hampton. Yeah. I wouldn't know how to arm wrestle Steve. him. He's probably one of the toughest boys that ever was, and his sons were too. <laughs> Played football for winter cutter. Not for the history. Yeah. We need to reduce. We need leadership. But we don't just need it from this table. We need it from everybody in this room. Yeah, good for you. The bottom line is we need to reduce weight. We need to recycle right. Mm -hmm. The New York Times journalist and science columnist Joe Tierney wrote a piece for the New York Times called The Reign of Recycling, challenging many of our long-held beliefs in an article it challenges whether some materials should be recycled, some materials should be recycled, and points out which ones are worth worthwhile. Aluminum, paper, cardboard. Count for 90% of the recycling greenhouse benefits. Recycling a ton of aluminum cans saves three tons of carbon dioxide. Conversely, it takes three tons of glass to save only one ton of carbon dioxide. 
Recycling cardboard and paper doesn't quickly drain monetary resources either. Plus, manufacturing cardboard and paper from raw, from raw materials is incredibly expensive. Mm. Just as an example, if we said we don't take any more glass. If I'm a business and you say you don't take glass, I'm getting cans. Simple as that. The cans are worth 1.7 cents a piece. 32 cans equals a pound. That's 54.4 cents for a pound. You multiply that out times the ton, you're talking $1,100 in aluminum, it's all clean. Glass costs 70 to $90 to process a ton of glass. Then it's sold for $10 a ton. I don't think too many business people would say that's a very good investment. And, you know, we need to think outside the box. We need leadership from every person in this room, you know. We need a full court press. I'm not sure, and I realize, Mr. Chairman, we don't do any back and forth. I was on a trash and recycling committee. Everybody knows the work I've done at Hampton Beach with respect to bathrooms and parking meters yeah. and state parks, plates, and the town. You know, I've been working long and hard. It benefits everybody in town, businesses and residences. The first year the town manager came on, I went to see him. It was the first time we met privately. It was in April. I'm not sure your first year. And I said, get ready for the cardboard invasion. <laughs> and I said, because it where it was in April, the cardboard hits the beach around Memorial Day. Everybody stocks up. The next door business to me, I'm running the laundromat over by the 99 with Seacoast Furniture. They had 30 yard roll off dumpsters getting hauled away for free. Everybody went over. I came and suggested it. I was told that, you know, how are we going to police it? Well, we, if we can't, I said, put it next to the police station. If we can't police there, we may as well give up. <laughs> you know, you got cameras. But anyway, last week, you know, Rusty just happened to bring up, you know, bottles in the trash. And, and Chris said, we have obligations, you know, contractual obligations. Does the recycled material belong to our contract supplier once it's in the recycle bin? I think my understanding is yes. You know, people aren't supposed to go picking through them once it's in there. Yeah. But we need to reduce the glass weight. Let's get rid of it. Let's get everybody, you know, to collect, collect their cans. I heard Regina brought up a bottle crusher businesses were offering to buy. How about a can crusher? I'll get rid of the bottles altogether and say, okay, here we're going to go do cans. Mm. How about cardboard? How about the Hampton Beach Village District, the state of New Hampshire, the Hampton Beach Area Commission, the businesses and their lobbyists, the chamber, put a full court press to reduce trash? Mm -hmm. How about the state providing space to handle material? They have an area at the state park which well, us locals always call the state park down by the bridge. They have a place that I call a bullpen. They have a garage, big garage and a small garage. In between is what I call a bullpen. I believe it's a bit empty right now. I think they put all their lifeguard chairs in there and stuff. Well, maybe if you got all these entities to work together, and you said, look, we're gonna, not only are we going to reduce this and take it out of the town's weight, we're going to make money with it. And then we're going to turn around and, you know, there was an article this year about there was an article in here um, talking about promoting Hampton Beach. His, his Hampton Beach lead is ready for promotional blitz, getting some money from the state of New Hampshire to promote the beach. How about we made a program that we were making money, and they said all the money that we make with this program is going to build a playground at the state park. It's open all year to people to park for free. We've gone through this in April, you know, in spring and fall. We keep talking about shoulder seasons, you know. I get really tired and I get mad when I hear people talking about rats. I get tired when I hear people talking about taxes, okay? My kitchen and living room, I measured it today just for, you know, to, to be somewhat accurate, is about 288 square feet. That's my living room and kitchen combined. I challenge any person in this room to come sit at my counter, pull your tax bill out and pull mine out and tell me who, who's getting a better deal, okay? That's life, but I get tired of hearing about rats. If you go take care of your trash and you get rats, you deserve rats. Thank if you. I got a problem on my property, I'm going to clean it up and keep it clean because I do more business when I do. Thank you, Charlie. We appreciate it. I want to thank you very much for your time and consideration, and I wish this group back here would say, we're going to recycle, we're going to make some money, and 
put it to the best playground on the East Coast. Thank you Thank very you. much. Anyone else like to speak this evening? Room. If you want to identify yourself. Yeah, if I must. My name is Timothy Citizen Jones, 16 Dustin Avenue. I wasn't planning on coming here tonight, but as usual, Mr. Fred Weiss inspired me to come down here <laughs> when he was proclaiming that nobody collects in the municipal tax rate trash. And he cited a few mega cities such as Chicago and Los Angeles. And I find it odd that he didn't mention New York City our closest mega city, which picks up everything. If you put it out on the sidewalk, they pick it up. It don't matter what it is. So it's simply not true that nobody uses the municipal tax rate to pick up trash. And as long as I'm here, I'll throw out a few other thoughts too. Trying to separate commercial from residential trash is, in my opinion, and I believe there's sufficient uh, case law in the matter, perfect demonstration of inequality, justice. They're taxpayers, just as the residents are, the commercial is. They should not be getting different services than the residential, just as the residential shouldn't be getting different services than the commercial. Because both are, in fact, taxpayers. In fact, state law does not not allow you to charge a different tax rate for commercial versus residential. There's a reason for that. They want equality of services with taxes with regard to how we distribute that services, I have said before and I'll say briefly tonight, that we should be able to relatively easily calculate how much a full barrel costs to pick up and tip, basically dump. And with that, instead of giving or selling barrels to various entities because they need more than one, we should not only charge them the cost of the barrel, but the cost of the service associated with the barrel. It's fairly, very, very simple in my mind. Your existing structure of distribution is pretty well. It just needs to be reframed in the principal concept that you get one barrel of pickup, that's it. If you need more, you pay for it. Full boat, not simply the plastic barrel, but the actual service behind it. And there are a lot of nuances to how we go about achieving this formula and all this other stuff, depending on how precise you want to be. I won't go into it with all the details that you might like, but if you want to invite me back, I'll be happy to. And Chris, I want to say the <laughs> separate brain lane at the uh, transfer station for residents. Love it. Thank you. Any other um, people, anyone else would like to speak from the public? <clears throat> no one else would like to speak? Okay, we're going to move it back to the board. Mr. Wardell. All right. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Chris and Jen. Thank you for everybody that spoke tonight. You know, there are tons of ideas here, and all the ideas are good ideas. You know, there's no bad ideas. When people bring them forward and talk about it, it's a good thing. As I see it, we have a macro and we have a micro issue here. And the macro issue is that we live in a very uh, fragile environment, and recycling is very, very important from that aspect. And we have to figure out a long-term process of how we're going to address that problem. And a lot of people talked about that. And we need a committee. You know, I think a couple of people talked about putting a committee together to look at the long-term process. What are we going to do? I think one of the problems with our trash is it's been band-aided and put together and put together in an ordinance here, an ordinance there, and then you end up with something that people, everybody doesn't like, and it's just a mess. And we've got to fix that. And the only way you're going to fix that is by a slowly working through it, not coming to a meeting and then all of a sudden making a decision. The other thing is, I think the micro is what are we going to do right now? And we do have a problem. But these people, the business people, have to open up, or they are open now, and they have to run their business. And in order to run a business, you have to have some kind of certainty in what you're doing. So I don't think, I'm not prepared, and I won't vote to make any changes right now because I don't think that that's what we should be doing. I think we should allow people to open their business and have a, a, an idea of what's going to happen with their business this summer. I think there are a lot of ideas for change. I think we can change <coughs> a lot of things. And I think 
working in conjunction with everybody that that'll happen. But I don't think doing it on a quick basis is, uh, is, is smart at all uh, right before the season. You know, and Bob Preston brought up a good thing. There was a Warren article. Now, I don't decide whether somebody knew what they were voting on or not. They voted on it. That's all I know, that there were votes. And it was 84% uh, voted to continue. So I don't see where we can change that immediately. I think it needs to be thought out, well thought out, and then dealt with. Thank you. Rusty. Well, he, as usual, he stole some of my thunder, but that's OK. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that first. <laughs> you know I, I had written down here 80% voted for the commercial. That was before Bob came up with the actual figure of 84. You know, we had three former selectmen that got up here and spoke. And they all spoke about needing to do something. Well, again, they are former selectmen. And this all came up when they were here and needed to be done back then. And nothing was ever done. So we've got stuck to do it. And I think we need to have our public works team has come up with a good revised DPW yard plan. I think we need to let them work on that. I think we need to have a committee. We can't do anything knee-jerk reaction. I, I, I don't believe in that. I think, But we can start small steps. W get a committee together. Find out what maybe, maybe some of our beach businesses or some of our town businesses or some of the, our citizens in town can come up with some ways that we can start to implement stuff slowly. <coughs> can't do anything to start. Again, no knee-jerk reactions. You know, uh, Mr. Uh, McGuirk got up here and... Uh, spoke with passion and I, and I really appreciated that. I've known his family for a long time. Well, I did live down on that beach and I can remember guys like Joe LaFramboise. I can remember two guys, uh, uh, Phil Bean and Rusty Bridal, working on the back of Packers in 74. So the town has done trash back then. We were summer employees and we did that. The town has done trash for a long time. We need to continue to make sure we have a clean beach. We need to make sure we continue that we work with our beach businesses and our beach citizens down there to make sure that we have that. But again, this is not just a beach or a town problem or downtown problem. It's a, a, a I'll call it a citywide problem, even though we're not a city. It's the whole area. And we need to do methodically, we need to work on it. 84% of the people said they wanted to continue with commercial trash. And until the people vote differently, I, I can't see it making any, any, any knee-jerk re reactions. Thank you. Okay. Um, I would like to speak and say something. Um, number one, um, uh, I to also agree. I've lived in two other places, and I never got charged for my trash. In Florida, I grew up in Florida. They are, it's included in the tax base there. It was included in the tax base in Ohio when I lived there. I don't know about the commercial trash, but just the regular trash. Um, the uh, thing is, we, this isn't something that there's a knee-jerk reaction because we've been talking about it ever since last year, if not year before, in the year before that, that we're going to do something and we're going to do something before the, be the summer started. That's now. Um, we have a uh, recommendation from the DPW of they feel that it should be 10 barrels per business. Um, that's what their recommendation is. Um, I think the problem here is that within the business community, everybody, there's, no, there's nothing that is fair the way the, business, the businesses are being picked up. Some people have 40 barrels and some people have mm -hmm. five. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's what's unfair. Everyone isn't being treated the same, and that's particularly true for the businesses. I personally don't understand, and I would like to ask the DPW, why is there no one here from uptown? Are there no complaints from uptown along Route 1? The best I can answer, because obviously not have spoken with them, is that the businesses uptown that are collected are smaller businesses and may not be affected by any of the proposed changes that went forth. There and could the be a handful or two, um, whether it's business, condo, um, or, I mean, we went through the entire yep. list the other day, it's smaller sections, but there are also many that have their own private 
Mm -hmm. And so the bigger businesses for years have had their probably their own pickup, similar to the way the casino has always picked mm -hmm. up their own trash and done their own recycling. Right. Um, and so there are some places that have it, have enough space that um, they, I don't know, maybe they have enough space, they still feel that they uh, want to keep their place looking clean or whatever, but they're, there are bigger places that don't want to be, uh, they would rather have the ability to have their, to <coughs> handle their trash so that it always looks the way they want it to look or whatever. Um, but that's part of the problem to me. And we have stated thoroughly for the whole last year that something was going to be done before the summer started. So this is not new. Um, uh, the, um, is it possible to, uh, and I've been approached by different people, said that they wish they could just pay you to pick their trash up. Is there any, any consideration ever given to uh, expanding, Chris, uh, the pickup and charging people for it? Uh. There's been some thought, some consideration to it, um, but we'd have to change as a business model how we uh, collect those fees. Um, and how they would offset the department's costs. Because, you know, for instance, I've looked at all the annual reports going back to like 1985. If you look at collectively the last 10 years of the department, in those 10 years we turned in back to the town th over $3 million in revenues. They helped hold down the tax rate they helped the police department, the fire department, and the school. They did nothing for the department itself. Mm -hmm. The only thing that we've ever Im implemented for the department is the, the sewer access fee back in, I want to say, 2015, mm -hmm. which, you know, right now has a balance around 200000 and we do use it, like, for instance, when a pump dies or blows up, you know, to, to tap that. So, yeah, we, you know, I mean, there's... Like for instance, on the car, um, other communities who have carts, they, um, especially in you know the Carolinas, they have uh, literally barcode readers mounted on the trucks that read the cart, so they know whose cart they're picking up. Mm -hmm. They have a transducer that weighs the cart. Uh, it that's just that's literally that's feels how much the cart is, yeah. and those people indirectly get. I, I'm sh there's some methodology it gets built. Uh, it goes back to Fred Rice's comment, it would take another level of bookkeeping within the department and, and or a, a solid waste manager, if you will, to make sure that it, yeah. it's getting collected. And then somehow through the town meeting, uh, we would have to establish a, I, Fred can correct me on this if I'm out there, uh, some mechanism for those fees to end up back in a revolving account where they pay for solid waste disposal and recycling. So off the, um, do you, you're looking to make your, to make this whole project of picking up trash and recycling a smaller uh, situation rather than expanding it in a, a said way that you just oh, described? Yes, it's in some respects, well, the other thing my analysis looked at was since 1985 we've always had 41 people period. Mm -hmm. Our, um, we've got 11 more miles of road. Mm -hmm. We still have 11, 42 people. We pick up trash curbside. We still have 42 people. Mm -hmm. If you look at the pro proportion of our budget that I say, I tell people we don't really have too much control over snow, uh, water that flows into the wastewater treatment yeah. plant, and trash that we receive curbside. Mm -hmm. It makes up somewhere between 68 and 70 percent of our budget. If you take into account, if you look at the just the, the operational side of the budget, I can control that isn't trash, solid waste, uh, wastewater, or uh, snow. And you'll look at the amount of money that uh, we've returned back to the town, we're actually talking about a negative 2% budget increase over those, that same period of time. So the department hasn't grown 
personnel wise right it has had a proportional uptick in the budget mm -hmm. if you look at our you know we've gone from four we're now we're over five but it's in response to trash chemicals for the wastewater treatment plant electrical usage and, and snow that's it otherwise it's been a pretty static budget it's always been 20,000 for trees it's always been 20,000 for sidewalks so a couple of years ago the the other boards and the discussion went along at what point will the department reach a um, breaking point break, well not have so much a breaking point but your efficiency of scales are going to go yes. start going the other way yes we we're, we're there we're yes. it yeah um, is the trash is can, you know if the trash if, if chemicals electricity the cost of trash keeps going up and we still get like one of the speakers predict you still get a default budget there won't be really a highway department it'll just be so you think you're at a crisis point now yes I, I know I am yeah yes. okay and um, I think that one of the things is that we do have you know we have to take a look at there are a lot more uh, bars uh, coming forward in the future from what everyone can see there certainly are many more of those type of establishments now than there was 20 years ago or 40 years ago uh, 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 I totally don't agree with that if you look at the size of the bars what's there today and I personally just don't think that's true um, I think that we uh, have to make a decision I'm not saying that we have to make it tonight but we can't deal with these people um, coming next week with the um, condos and make a decision for them and not make a decision for this problem too. Regina? Yeah, I have a few things I like to say. So I took, um, we all know there's an issue. I think everyone here knows there's an issue and I think we probably are gonna have to address it sometime in the near future. But and we've been talking about it, but the reason why it's all accelerated right now is because this whole like increase to cost for us to get the stuff out of here. So looking at last year's budget, which is for, I'm gonna ask Chris and Jen, if I take the total waste collection line and the uh, hauling fees, I'm looking at based on last year's, which is what we have, because we have a default budget, and comparing that to the Board of Selectmen recommended, which is upped it probably about $250,000, taking into consideration the additional costs. Right. So that $250,000 is gone, because we have a default budget. So that's really what the financial crisis is. Um, we're spending just those two line, item, two line items from last year, it's just slightly under a million dollars of the public works budget, which yep. is what, about five million? Yeah, so it makes up 20% of the whole. So it's 20% of the whole budget, just picking lines. up trash, all trash, all over the town that we pick up. These guys in the audience, they all know it's an issue. But to go in there, and April 15th is today, and the season's gonna be kicking off, and if we get good weather, it's probably gonna kick off really fast. And put a maximum on, listen, maybe people shouldn't have 40 bins, maybe they shouldn't have 50 bins, but the bottom line is they do. And it's like anything else, when you're given something to just take it away, is very difficult, mm -hmm. especially when we're coming into the season that we're coming into. So that being said, I'm going to agree with Rusty and Jim that I am definitely not in a position to limit the 10 barrels. And I'm going to have a lot of things to say next week, too, when we talk about the condo trash, but we're going to save that for next week. So I would think that if we start working together, I really liked what uh, Tommy McGurk had to say. I've met some of the business owners this weekend. I wasn't around last week. And they are willing to help. And I've met with private companies outside of this board, and they have ideas. Public Works, as always, you, I mean, the residential lane or whatever you want to construct down there, that would actually break out the different types of things to recycle. Yep, could. But what we have to remember is that million dollars that we spend every year, a lot of it comes from those guys sitting in the audience <coughs> from their taxes. Mm -hmm. So what we're, what we're trying to do here is save money, but 
we don't want to save it from the people that we're trying to protect, or at least that I'm trying to protect, and those are the taxpayers. So I'm sorry, but I am not ready to vote on this. I think it's something that we can be considered at, and I know a lot of people, listen, I've lived in town, but I grew up on that beach. I never owned a business, but I grew up on it. Mm -hmm. Everything I did down there. And those guys, when they say they'll help, they will. And I think we need to uh, work toward that. And if we could just comment back. We're willing to work with anyone. Um, one of the, th I remember back to a college class where the statement got made, uh, a problem is not society's problem until society itself recognizes the yeah. problem. Yeah. You know, you look back to <coughs> um, Mothers Against Drunk Driving. Um, they were probably laughed at and scoffed at. Um, there's been other social <coughs> movements that have made changes. It's obvious from their comments, our comments, tonight, your comments, that everyone now realizes, should probably realize, there, there is a problem with respect to refuse collection and maybe how we manage it, how yeah. we, so yeah. s now that we, everybody's attention is there, maybe <coughs> now is the time to, yes, sit down and get everybody who has a stake at this at the table and uh, come up with a, a fair and equitable plan the, on many, many fronts from reduction, education, reuse, et cetera, et cetera. So we're not opposed to doing that at all. Mrs. Wolseley. I am concerned about the health and welfare of the Public Works Department. I think you are potentially reaching, I'd call it a breaking point, you have so many demands on your services. I cringe to think what's going to happen in the coming year with the Route 1 project, with all the projects. You've got sewer lines. You've got more projects than you can shake a stick at. You have trouble getting people because nobody wants to work for Public Works anymore. They want to tinker with their little electronic stuff. Uh, so y there, there is a problem. There is a serious problem for you here. And, and I am concerned, and I care about you. I've been working with Public Works since my first term, uh, off and on since 1978. Um, I am concerned about businesses in this community who have always paid to have their trash removed. Um, uh, LeMay's, Hannaford, um, there are businesses in Galley Hatch. Uh, there are businesses all over this town that have always paid to remove their waste. And they're paying, as we are in their taxes, for some of the commercial waste. I don't think that's necessarily fair. Um, what I, I'm really worried about what's happening with the recycling now with the glass. The weight of the glass and segregating the glass, and if we can find a way to do it, because that is a big, big problem. My recycling is mostly cat food cans, so, uh -huh. so I'm, but I'm, I think this glass problem is gonna be a, a really big one. But the other thing that concerns me, and I would like to really see action here, the board has been negotiating a joint operation plan with the state. And I'm going to go back to when Mr. Warburton ran the State Beach. And uh, I'm going to even go back farther than that because Mr. Warburton and I served on the Board of Selectmen mm -hmm. in, 19, in 1997, uh, 96, 97, when the transfer station was built. And uh, we had high hopes. The then manager, this has nothing to do with Fred, the then manager did not see to it that the transfer station was constructed in the way it was originally configured. Um, we are placing a huge wear and tear uh, on the transfer station right now with the volume of waste going through it. And it wouldn't surprise me to have Chris come in one of these days saying, We've got to reconstruct the entire transfer station. It's falling apart. There's too much stuff going through there. We need, I think, as a first step, what I envision here 
is sitting down with the state of New Hampshire, which is a challenge in and of itself, and as part of the joint operation plan, tell them to do at Hampton Beach what they do in every other state park in the state of New Hampshire, pay a private hauler to right. take away the beach state park waste. There is no reason on God's green earth why your department should have to handle and have any responsibility for the state of New Hampshire, Hampton Beach State Park waste. I would like to use that as, as a wedge, and I think that's a big thing that could be done fairly, fairly easily, I hope, <clears throat> as we get around to thinking and discussing the commercial waste. But that state park stuff has got to go. It's, it's causing jams in your messes in your uh, operation, and that shouldn't, it shouldn't be. Is you that should true? not be responsible for Is that. Is that true that you're having a problem, like she just stated? Well, too much waste. From the with one the state, because no. we are working on a joint operational, and they seem to be working with us with that. Ah. So you're saying it's not true? It, well, let me. There was a couple. First of all, the, the, you know, the, we do have people that do want to work for Public Works. A new one started today. A, I know, a Hampton but it's hard. resident. Um, but we're, we're expect, experiencing the same thing that other employers are experiencing is, you know, lack of number right. of people. In the, but we, and we have two new offer letters going out. So that labor-wise, it's not as big a problem. With respect to all the other things the department's handling, meaning, you know, the uh, wastewater treatment plant and all those, we have engineers on staff that all those, that the town hires, other firms. Yeah. Uh, all those projects are delegated to them. Uh, we meet with them. We get the summations. Mm -hmm. We do the oversight. So we're, we're handling. Overseeing. We're handling all of that. Yeah. Right. Uh, so that's not out of out of line. Um, as far as the transfer station being worn out or maybe under designed, the transfer station itself, the compactors have a huge throughput capacity, mm -hmm. meaning you can just keep dumping, 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 yeah. and if you got enough trailers on the other side, they'll handle it. So the transfer station's not. Uh, what the new layout is for is it, it wasn't designed as a toll booth, okay? It, it can only handle so many vehicles per hour. Right. Um, and it, 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 we're finding that a lot of people are practicing um, how to back up uh, trailers. <laughs> and, and, it, and we're really, we're not that, I, I as one, you can just gouges in my personal vehicle, it can show you. I'm still <laughs> learning myself, so uh, I'm not, I'm one of those. But um, so so it's you know the the new layout that we're proposing yeah. is to you know help with traffic management. Uh, James found a letter all the way back to 2004 mm -hmm. where John Hangen talked to the director to the yeah. manager then and said we need to find a new way of uh, handling the additional traffic. So it's not a new issue. Well, um, what about the issue with the state? That's what I'm what, asking about. That's what we have. We're, we're, we're dealing with the j joint operation plan now, and we're expecting a letter to come back from them, and we'd like to deal with them. Is it as big a problem? Is it a big problem for you? What happens with the state? It'll be a bigger problem if we don't work with them, and I'll tell you why. Um, you know, when it came to a budget like this, we just tried to reduce... Uh, and stay within our budget by reducing our weekend hours. Mm -hmm. If we don't accept the state's trash and or we don't work with them to collect the trash, I'll have to put on more people every single weekend to go around and empty the bags on the west side. Um, we'll literally end up picking up, right now we have a, a three hour collection Saturday morning and Sunday morning. It, I would expect that it would go to an all day for four s staff members. So. They also pay us for the trash that they deliver to us. Um, all of it, it's commercial trash, uh, where I think it's 10 cents a mm -hmm. pound. Mm -hmm. So they're not, they're paying their dues cost wise. They're providing a shared uh, service to us as far as um, you know, picking up the trash, even at, you know, all the way to 11 o'clock at night. Um, so let's not, like the, we talked about studying this issue, Let's not rush into bite off, what, when the 
right off my nose to spite my face. Okay, well, thank so you for I don't, your answer. I don't, wouldn't want to rush forward that. No. So it sounds like to me what you're saying is you uh, do, uh, it's important to work with the state, just like you're saying it's important to work with the business community. Exactly. Rusty. And the only thing I was going to say is it's not only the weekends, but like you just said, it's till 11 o'clock at, at night. 11 o'clock at night. So and your guys get off typically. 3.30? 3.30. So if we didn't have the state picking up our barrels on our side of the street, they would from 3.30 till the next morning, they would be full. Right. Mm -hmm. I so, bet I'd have to put on four people uh, another eight-hour shift, which is, you know, uh, for three nights a week, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, and you don't have that in your budget right now to do that this year? Correct. <laughs> That's what I thought. Okay. So any other comments? So it sounds to me like we have a consensus here that um, the board evidently doesn't want to make any changes, is what I'm hearing. Well, I'd like to, I'd like to make a motion that we set up a committee. I'll second mm, that motion. I don't know. I, I think we need to wait until we uh, talk, you know, possibly with the recycling, the uh, condo people. Also, yeah, before we make any major yeah. well, decisions, this is this is two different mm -hmm. ideas, and mm -hmm. I'd rather start get something going now than wait another week or two or three weeks as we get further down in. We may be able to have some sort of, you know, get these guys working. I know the the beach business community, because there has been the beach, not the town, but the beach business community has been working and meeting and trying to figure out some of this stuff, and I'd like to encourage that. And and, and instead of having any time delay make it move forward you know put mm -hmm. maybe one or two selectmen uh, our public works director and, and deputy director on it a couple of citizens mm -hmm. a couple of people from the beach business community to allow that to happen so is this the type of thing you'd like to do with you know when, when we talk with the condo people too we might we, we might end up having this because okay. they're two separately different issues yes. Yeah. They're two distinct and separately different issues and I think we need to do something like that Rus Rusty made a motion and, and I'm going to second it but I want to amend it I want to amend it to say that we continue as we're continuing now so that these people, the businesses, leave tonight knowing that certainty what's happening. Um, Will you accept the amendment, Rusty? Yep. So he's got a motion and a second. So that first everything the stays second. the same for right now. For yep. right now, when we start, we, we start to form a committee and work on that. It may not happen for a couple of weeks, right. but we, we're going to work on that to get a committee going. Okay. I would like to see as part of that committee some of the businesses of town. Absolutely. Who well, pay to dispose of their own waste If they want to come, that would be more than fine. I don't really understand why there's no one here because I personally thought this was a bigger issue than just at the beach, but it obviously is a beach issue mm -hmm. is what we're seeing here there's tonight. Businesses from of town who have for years paid their own way and also pay the taxes for our other businesses should be included. Okay, well, so we have a motion and um, second. a second. And um, the thing is, I'd like, to, you know, I think we do have to come to some decisions and I'd like us to make our decisions after we hear the recycling, um, I mean, the uh, condo thing at the meeting, at the, after the next meeting, I think that we need to take a look at what we're gonna do both with this and the condos. Mm -hmm. So, but we have this for the, uh, to have a uh, committee. And an amendment that said we, we continue as we are as right now this summer. Mm -hmm. right. That's the amendment. So that's what we're going to vote on. Mm -hmm. Are we voting Wait. on the amendment first? No. no. We're voting on just having set up a, a commercial. I, this is for a committee is what I, I know. thought. It's for I a committee, but I also, <laughs> and he asked to put an amendment on it, and I, I agreed. And I, I'm ready to vote on that. So that there will be no changes. Right? No, no changes. Okay. All those in favor? Well, that, oh, just restate your original motion because. My motion is to allow them to form a committee. To allow us to. Form us, a committee. it could be us to form a committee, but including some of our beach businesses, public works, board of selectmen. Sessions. Um, and that we don't do any changes yeah. in our collection right now. We, that we can continue the way we're doing it, 
until we hear back from this committee, which could probably take six months. But I, I think we this is not a knee jerk reaction, and it's not something that we're gonna mm -hmm. we're gonna fix today or tomorrow. But once again, you said beach businesses. You want beach. it can be any businesses. Well, that's business. The, thank you. Any business. I personally don't feel it's a knee-jerk reaction. We've been talking here for months now, and I think we're just kicking the... I'm not against the beach commercial trash to begin with, but I am against your amendment. So all those in favor and against, thank you for coming tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. At one time. All those uh, 2049. <laughs> I don't know how you're going to...